Jesus, be brief. Excellencies, representatives of government agencies and multilateral organizations, researchers, members of civil society and colleagues. My name is Therese Schumander Magnusson and I'm the director of the Nordic Africa Institute. Dr. Mistry from Future Africa, who was supposed to chair this closing remark session, uh, could unfortunately not join. But myself and Ambassador Lomo will do our best to try and capture some reflections and thoughts from this very rich conversations that we have been having today. It is with gratitude that I, on behalf of the Nordic Africa Institute, thank the University of Pretoria's Centre for Advancement of Scholarship, CAS, and Future Africa for organising and hosting today's high-level policy dialogue. And as many of you have already referenced, today's meeting took place at a very critical point in time. It was aimed to generate new perspectives and knowledge exchange. We have probed many issues related to the efficiency of the UN vis-a-vis -vis Africa, the challenges for elected members and the opportunities for shaping more responsive and relevant council outcomes for human security in Africa. The discussions have provided a unique opportunity for systematic learning where the level of knowledge and interactions have been very high. The rich expertise from both science and policy and insights from the speakers' presentations truly sparked a vibrant dialogue, as we have seen to the bitter end here, with the audience and, of course, with some important questions from our online viewers and participants. The UN Security Council has, for the past eight decades, been an institution where great hopes have been projected. Yet, this history has been beset by hindrances and political deadlocks that have not always met the needs of people living in conflict. An Africa which is now routinely the focus of more than two-thirds of the meetings at the Council has a particular interest in the reform and the renewal of the Council. And in this context, research can be helpful, for instance, to understand the dynamics within the Council and the workings of the UN system on thematic issues such as, for example, women, peace and security, as we have heard today. Because in time of deep friction and fissures in the multilateral system, the UN Security Council is still the only body where different sides meet to discuss and debate security issues. In my view, the history of the Council, the politics of membership terms, the impact of its outcomes and how they are implemented all merit continued attention and examination. I hope that here on UN Day, 77th anniversary of the UN Charter, the importance of our shared reflections shines through. I trust that some of the points raised today can be carried forward in smaller discussions through continued research, by engagement with the public, both in Africa and in the Nordic regions in particular, and of course with policymakers in your capitals and within the UN. I would now like to thank all the speakers, the panelists for delivering incredibly important perspectives and insights here today. For us at the Nordic Africa Institute, the collaboration with the Centre for Advancement of Scholarship is an excellent example of how we strive to carry out our mandate. For we place great emphasis on the co-creation of knowledge with partners both in Africa and the Nordic settings. Also, we strongly believe that the role of science is critical. It is a cornerstone of every democratic society, even more so as the world faces increasingly complex and multi-layered systems challenges. Yet, science-based 
African perspectives are often not given full attention and meaningful space. And for that reason, I'm grateful to you, Ade, for your leadership in this collaboration and for lending your time, your vast experience, your keen intellect and dedication to our joint work on the UN Security Council. Thank you to the University of Pretoria and my colleagues at the Center for the Advancement of Scholarship and Future Africa for all the hard work that goes behind the scenes to bring us all together here today. And thank you, Angela, and all my other colleagues of the Nordic Africa Institute for your extensive efforts. Now, on behalf of NAI, we are excited and look forward to working closely with colleagues and partners in Africa to build on our long-standing cooperation on knowledge generation and knowledge dissemination. And now it is my honour and privilege to hand over to Ambassador Maud Lomo, Deputy Director General of South Africa's Department of International Relations for her closing remarks. Ambassador, the floor is yours. Thank you very much uh, for, for that. Uh, my my co-chair, I'm not chairing anymore, which is wonderful at this, uh, this time of the day. Um, Professor Adibayo, Senior Research Fellow for the Center for the Advancement Scholarship at UP, the leader of the African Intelligentsia. We are always grateful to have you. Um, Dr. Mvumba Selstrom, my sister, thank you so much uh, for organizing this today, but also for giving me the opportunity uh, to get here, somebody else said earlier on, to get intellectually nourished, uh, but also help us to reflect on our daily work um, and the mandate of the department I work for, which is DECO. Thank you everyone who's been here, who has really contributed so immensely uh, to this discussion. It, it has been a very successful day um, indeed of inputs and reflections, um, where we all said that the UN and UNSC in particular has failed in critical areas, but can still succeed because it's important. Um, we also highlighted that uh, E10 members need, need more support, both from the AU, UN and everybody else, but two years is a very short space of time. So they have to work strategically with all uh, other countries uh, who are there. Um, but successes have been achieved and they've been pointed out by the different presenters. And we, we, we emphasize the fact that the UN needs more a closer relationship with regional organizations. Um, they need resources, they need support, and, and, and all those things which have been uh, highlighted. But we all agreed, and we hope this time something is going to happen which is concrete, that the UN need to be reformed. Um, perhaps it needs to be transformed more than just reforming it. Elia only spoke about the, the foreign policy of Ubuntu of South Africa, but um, the UN is about Ubuntu. I am because you are. And uh, COVID-19 taught us about something, reminded us about how important solidarity is. And the, the principle and the reality is nobody's safe until everybody's safe. And that's what the UN is about. And that's why it's so important for all of us to make sure that it's, it's, it's transformed. Of course, it was also pointed out at some point that uh, the balance of power has shifted and perhaps some of the members in the UNSC no longer have the space as before or the, 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 the kill. Uh, they should allow other members to come in. I'm not going to go into that space. <laughs> However, there were also other voices which came through and they said, why are we paying so much attention and, and spending so much money on, on peace operations, which means there's conflict without addressing development and the root causes of conflict and underdevelopment. And, and I think some of those were, were also raised earlier on that, for instance, issues like climate change are affecting our societies 
uh, land issues, they lead to conflict. And those are some of the areas which uh, we need to look at closely. But also we've never asked the question, why if we have been able to resolve the conflict so successfully, why is it going back all the time? Why is there a cycle, a recycle of conflict in the same areas and more or less around the same issues? Again, the, 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 the inability of us to understand the root causes and address them accordingly. But also, once the conflict has been resolved, I think there is evidence in UN in particular which says we don't pay enough attention and, and put enough resources on post-conflict reconstruction and development. I would argue that uh, the, the UN reform then is not just about representativity to make sure that it's democratic, but it's also about normative values and principles. Perhaps we need to start thinking about when there is conflict, we no longer send the military uh, groups to go there, but we talk about dialogue. We say we need to solve the problems by talking. So we engage differently in solving the, 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 the problems. Issues of inclusivity we spoke about. And we said women have to be part of that. The young people have to be part of that. But it's, there are com um, complex issues, one or two, which I want to highlight when it comes to that. But we also didn't talk about the relationship between peace and justice. Perhaps we celebrate too much because there is peace while justice is not addressed, which is why then we go back to the same issues. So then when we talk about the reform of the UN and how to, to talk about we prevent conflict, how do we deal with it where it arises because it will always arise, but how also how do we deal with it afterwards? The issues of peace and justice will always be very critical. I'm not going to be long. Um, so that, that's that normative where we're moving away from uh, the, the violent, uh, the military kind of approach where we're, we're thinking about how do we build a culture of peace and, and of living together, of solving our problems differently. Because then the, those who have got power, power of the arms, they go and, and, and attack and then we put more uh, weapons to, to deal with that and then it just goes on and it just goes on, it doesn't stop. But also as we're saying, um, earlier on we we're talking about how E10 is important, how Africa is important and how much uh, resources are spent on Africa. And uh, I was wondering when was the director for the state of US uh, going to highlight some of the issues. For instance, as we speak now, there's a bill which is called Countering Malign Russian Activities in Africa. I'm not going to go at length uh, in saying what does that mean. But I'm saying these are some of the issues when we talk about working together and solving uh, conflict and problems and we need to work together. Uh, we're not addressing because then there's some, some ways of thinking about how you should solve issues in Africa. Um, I've spoken about the issue of Ubuntu, but the issue of capacity perhaps as well, uh, we need to build our own capacity to engage with these issues. And some of these we discussed during lunch that uh, the issue is not black and white. The, the, the situation and the conditions are more complex than just saying we do this, then it will end up there. However, for instance, in South Africa, in DECO in particular, we looked at our history and how we got where we got. And everybody talks about a miracle of a peaceful uh, settlement. But we realized and appreciated the fact that we had leaders who uh, had the ability to mediate and negotiate to get us where we are today. It's not perfect. Uh, it's, it's solidarity, it, it's, it's democracy. Um, uh, which, it, which is growing with all its complexities and, and challenges. However, we realize that as a, as a society, we need to build our own capacity in this area in particular, in mediation, negotiations, uh, conflict resolution skills for our youth and for everybody else and for women in particular. And these are the, perhaps is what uh, the colleague from the Finland uh, embassy was asking about. These are the skills which we also need to develop even in universities and in schools. 
uh, when we talk about peacemaking. Those abilities to, to prevent uh, conflict, but also to resolve it as it arises. And again, what was raised uh, before is a big issue is that it's not just government who can deal with this. We need NGOs, we need different sectors, all part of society to come together. Because after the war, we're not only building, rebuilding the state, but we're rebuilding nations and societies. So let me just say, um, I'm looking forward to us uh, working together towards uh, building human security, as my colleague uh, pointed out, because that's what's needed. But that needs a transformed UN, but it also needs, perhaps this is an opportunity where we look at the values and the principles going forward, which I know are not going to take us back, because I'm sure everybody has been shocked by this war, which is a traditional war, which we thought had been uh, stopped in the whole world and not within our lifetime or the next lifetime. So we need to rethink about how we're going to make sure that such a war doesn't happen ever again, let alone the fact that it has to stop now. So thank you very much, and I just want to thank everyone. Uh, I, I couldn't believe that we could still be here this time. <laughs> I, I thought in government we're working very long hours, but you proved me wrong. So I want to thank everybody and say thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for those very wise words and uh, messages, uh, Ambassador. I'm not going to keep you for long. I only have one more message, a very nice message, I have to say. So on behalf of the Nordic Africa Institute, I'm delighted to now invite you to join us here in the room to follow on our discussions uh, at a reception in the Future Africa Dining Hall, situated directly outside this auditorium, just across the courtyard, because this Reception is also commemoration of the Nordic Africa Institute's 60th anniversary. And we are so proud to make this milestone in South Africa through the timing of this policy dialogue and of course, and uh, the courtesy and welcome of University of Pretoria. So please join us uh, across the courtyard immediately now after this session. Thank you so much.